The goal of this video is to provide an intuitive understanding of the most fundamental equation in all of orbital mechanics, which is Newton's universal law of gravitation as a scalar and vector equation. Just using this one surprisingly simple equation, we can begin to simulate how bodies move in space. Now, both of these animations are using two body dynamics to simulate the spacecraft orbits around the Earth, and they are using Newton's universal law of gravitation in 3D as a vector equation, and it is plugged into Python like so here. And if you haven't already seen it on this channel, I have the Space Engineering Podcast, which is also available here on Spotify, Google Podcasts, and Simplecast, all of which I'll have links in the description too. So the first video in the series of the fundamentals of orbital mechanics, and this one will be going over the two-body problem. And we're going to start with the two-body assumptions, where in the two-body problem, we assume that all that exists in the universe is one small body like a spacecraft and one large body like the Earth, as is shown in the plot on the right. Then we'll get into Newton's universal law of gravitation, and then we'll also get into Newton's first law and how to apply that to get the acceleration due to gravity of an orbiting body in the scalar form and in the 3D form. And then we'll get a little bit into circular and elliptical orbits at the end. So let's start by defining the underlying assumptions behind the two-body problem. So first, we assume that all that exists in the universe are two bodies. One is very large, like the Earth, and another one is small, like a satellite orbiting the Earth. We also assume that the large body, Earth in this case, is spherical and its mass is evenly distributed. So if the body is spherical and mass is evenly distributed, the center of mass will be at the geometric center, which is the center of the sphere. And its pull due to gravity can be modeled as a point source at that point. This means that we can assume that the force due to gravity from Earth is coming from the geometric center of the Earth. And we must also assume that the small body does not gravitationally influence the large body. And this is a good assumption because the pull of something so small like a spacecraft is not going to influence the orbit of an object so massive like the Earth. So this is a good assumption. And lastly, we'll be using an inertial reference frame centered at the geometric center of the large body, which is Earth. And the inertial frame is shown in the white arrows on the plot here, centered at the center of the Earth. And even though these are a lot of assumptions and this can seem way too restrictive, you can still do a lot of very useful analysis with the results coming out of these assumptions. Once we have all these assumptions, we arrive at Newton's universal law of gravitation, which states that the force due to gravity on the small body is equal to the mass of the large body times the mass of the small body times the gravitational constant of, in our universe divided by the distance between them squared. Now note that this R is the distance between the geometric center of the large body and the small body, not the surface to the large body. And we are interested in finding the acceleration because this is how we can simulate the motion of orbiting bodies. So to get the acceleration, we must use Newton's first law, which states that the force applied onto an object is equal to the object's mass times its acceleration. And now this is true when the mass of the object is constant, which is true in this case. So we can then set these two equations equal to each other to find that the mass of the small body cancels out from these equations, leaving us with the scalar form of the most fundamental equation in all of orbital mechanics, which says that the acceleration of the small body is equal to the gravitational constant times the mass of the large body divided by the distance between them squared. And since for each large body, their mass is constant, say the Earth's mass is relatively constant, and the gravitational constant is constant in our universe, so their product is also constant. So we use that new constant called mu, and every body in the solar system has their own mu value. So in this equation, it gets even simpler to say that the acceleration of the small body is equal to mu times the distance between them squared. So in order to create 3D simulations of orbits, we need to extend that equation into three dimensions using vectors. So we turn that r that was a scalar before into a vector, which is the vector pointing from the center of the large body to the small body at any given point, which is shown in purple here on the plot. And this vector has x, y, and z components since we are doing this in three dimensions. And then we also need to add this negative sign because the acceleration due to gravity is pointing in the exact opposite direction from the position to the small body. So the position of the small body is modeled as the center of the Earth to the body, but then the acceleration is going opposite of that, which is why we have the negative. 
We then plug in the R vector into the 3D equation in the numerator, which means that we now must divide by the magnitude of that vector cubed instead of squared since the vector itself has one magnitude. So one magnitude divided by three magnitudes equals one over R squared, which is how the scalar equation was defined. And putting all this together, we get that the vector acceleration here which is a differential equation that we use to solve for the motion of the small body. Now, this is a differential equation because acceleration is a second derivative of position. And in order to simulate the motion of the small body and make plots like the ones I've showed in this video, we need to solve for the position of the small body over time. So the derivative of position is velocity and then the derivative of velocity is acceleration, which is what we have here. And this equation in its 3D form is exactly how it's plugged into software, which I already have a lot of videos on this channel showing how to apply it. And this series of fundamentals of orbital mechanics will be walking through in greater detail than I've shown before of how to actually plug in this equation. So this is the differential equation that I have in the Python software. And I have a lot of other stuff because this also accounts for attitude control. But if we're just looking at the 3D motion of the orbit, here is the fundamental equation right here with the acceleration of the spacecraft is equal to negative R, the position times the central body mu value divided by the norm of that R vector cubed. So after plugging in the dynamics of Newton's universal law of gravitation, we arrive to Kepler's first law, which states that the orbit of each planet is an ellipse with the sun at a focus. And this is the same thing as saying the orbit of any small body is an ellipse with the, with the large body at the focus for the two body problem. And that's exactly what we have here shown in this plot is that these are all valid orbits. These all use two body dynamics to simulate their motion and they can be very elliptical like this one in the red where the point that is closest to the large body is very close compared to the point that is farthest away and it can range all the way to a circular orbit which is this purple one here where every point is equidistant to the center at any time in the orbit and i'll be going deeper into all the geometry of elliptical circular and hyperbolic orbits in future videos in this series so that's pretty much it for this video. Be sure to hit like and subscribe to help me out with the YouTube algorithm and to be up to date with all the new videos coming out. And again, if you haven't seen it already, the Space Engineering Podcast is available on this channel and a bunch of other places, and I'll have links in the description. And also let me know if there are any questions about this video, if there's anything still confusing that I didn't cover well enough about the two-body problem. And also I'm making this video series in Spanish, so be on the lookout for a link in the description where I will have the videos to that. So yeah, so let me know any questions or comments you have, and thank you for watching.